These eight physicists, in my opinion, are likely to win the Nobel Prize of Physics in 2023, and we will talk briefly about the works of each of them, starting with the fields of condensed matter physics and topological systems, and the physicist Michael Berry. Michael Berry is well known for his work on something called the Berry's phase back in 1984, and after its experimental confirmation in 1986, every year people hope that he gets a Nobel Prize this year. Now, Berry's phase is related to the problem of the evolution of a system with time. If a system is initially in some state and if it changes with the time very slowly, then the final state of the system is very close to the initial state up to two phases. The first phase is called the time evolution phase and it depends on the amount of time for which the system evolved. And the second phase is called the geometric phase, which only depends on the initial and final energy of the system. The technical jargon for what I refer to as energy here is Hamiltonian. This result is called the adiabatic theorem. In generic cases, this geometric phase is not observable, but if the Hamiltonian of the system comes back to what it started with, then this geometrical phase is an observable thing and we can measure it. In 1984, Michael Berry calculated the general formula for this geometric phase. The first experimental verification of Berry's phase was done by using optical fibers in 1986. We now come to the work of Alexei Kitayev, who is well known for introducing the concept of topological quantum computers. These computers employ quasi-particles. Quasi-particles are objects in condensed matter physics that behave like particles, and the quasi-particles that these topological quantum computers use are called anions. Anions can be thought of as particles that have characteristics in between fermions and bosons. These anions live in two dimensions, which means that they evolve in a three-dimensional space-time. Their wall lines can get tangled into one another to make a mathematical object called a braid. A braid is stable against small disturbances of the system due to its topological properties, and that's why these computers are called topological quantum computers. Experiments do suggest that these quantum computers may be created in the real world. The work on anions also brings in Frank Wilczek, who has done a lot of work on anions. In fact, Wilczek was the one who proposed the name anions. Wilczek is already a Nobel laureate as he won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2004 with David Cross and Hugh Pulitzer for their work on asymptotic freedom. In 1984, Wilczek with Dan Rovers and Robert Schreifer predicted that in order to describe an effect called the fractional quantum Hall effect, you will need anions. In 2020, the direct detection of anions was made. Now let's come to the field of quantum computing where I guess that four people are most likely to win the Nobel Prize and let's start with Charles Bennett who has done pioneering work on quantum information theory. In 1993, Bennett with his collaborators wrote a seminal paper on quantum teleportation. In this paper, Bennett and his collaborators described the decomposition of the information in an unknown quantum state into classical information and some quantum mechanical information known as EPR correlators. This information can then be sent via two channels and then used at another place to reconstruct that same unknown quantum state. And this paper is so influential that this paper is called the teleportation paper in the community. In 2023, he was awarded the Breakthrough Prize in Fundamental Physics. Bennett also did pioneering work on quantum cryptography with Gilles Brussard, who is another candidate for a Nobel Prize this year in my opinion. Since Bennett and Brussard did their most important works together, we have already covered Brussard's work as well. Brussard also got a Breakthrough Prize in 2023. This brings us to David Deutsch, who effectively laid the foundations of quantum computing in 1985 by providing a proof that a quantum computer can perform tasks much more efficiently than a classical computer. In a later paper with Richard Joza, he provided an algorithm now known as deutsch joza algorithm, which was one of the first algorithms which was exponentially faster than a classical algorithm. However, a quantum algorithm that gained much more popularity was devised by Peter Shore, who came up with Shore's algorithm, and he is also among the candidates for a Nobel Prize. In 1994, Shore came up with an algorithm that could factor large numbers into their prime factors at a rapid speed. This might not seem a big deal, but it is because the cryptographic systems that many banks and other institutions use for their security are based on the difficulty of factoring large numbers and thus Shore's algorithm has a lot of practical consequences as well. David Deutsch and Peter Shore were also awarded the 2023 Breakthrough Prize in Fundamental Physics. The last person that I want to mention in the list is Francis Halsen, who is most well known for his work on detecting neutrinos in Antarctica. In 1987, he started on a project that detected neutrinos coming from the cosmic rays by detecting the electrical sparks that happen when these neutrinos collide with ice occasionally. This project was called Antarctic Muon and Neutrino Detector Array, or 
Amanda. The idea of this project was to bury an array of light sensors deep in the ice of Antarctica to remove the effects of background light and other particles in the cosmic rays. This experiment was partially successful because the interference from cosmic rays was not totally eliminated. On top of that, there were air bubbles in ice that also contaminate the results. Helzen made this project bigger and in 2005, his team started to work on Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory, which was almost a hundred times bigger than Amanda and it was buried almost a mile deep into the ice. After Ice Cube became operational in 2010, one of its biggest discoveries came in 2013 when it discovered high energy neutrinos from the sources outside of our galaxy. The source of these neutrinos is still not confirmed, although some work suggests that it might be a particular kind of object called a blazar. A blazar is an object near the center of a galaxy that emits high amount of energy in a jet of particles such that this jet comes directly toward us. There are some scientists who are not very likely to win a Nobel Prize this year, but I think that there is some possibility that they will win, so I'm just going to list their names here. In the end, I would say that these are just my educated guesses and I can be totally wrong about the recipients. Whoever will win a Nobel Prize this year will of course be someone deserving. However, I think that the prizes like this are just cherry on the top and the real prize is the pleasure that you get after you do a unique piece of work. So let's wait and see who gets the Nobel Prize in physics this year and I will see you in the next video.